Hi, guys. Sifu Mark here. And I do have to ask, please do not forget to hit the like, smash the subscribe button, and comment on anything, whether you like it or not. Let's get into today's interview. So with this episode of Chats, we speak with a former three-time U.S. national champion gold medalist, a two-time international champion U.S. team member, and young frame Taiji master. It's not fair to just label him a master of martial arts, as this passion has fueled another in dance, which makes him a master of movement. Based in Denver, Colorado, he travels internationally from the U.S. to Taiwan, to Singapore, and even to the United Kingdom to spread his knowledge gained through a great wealth of experience. Please welcome Master Christoph Clark. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine myself. And yourself, how are you? I'm doing quite all right. I definitely am. I'm very, very happy for the time that you have taken to speak with me on sh very short notice. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so let's go ahead and start things off. Let's not waste your time. Um, first question, how did you get started in the martial arts? Oh, I got started in martial arts, and, and the, the truth to be told it was like this. I seen a movie with an actor named James Cagney in a, a movie called Blood on, on the Sun. And I see he was doing judo, and I was... And I got interested there, and then James Bond, Sean Connery, and the James Bond movies, he was doing movements of kicking and punching. And the thing that really pushed it over the edge, 1966, was a show called The Green Hornet. Had an actor, Bruce Lee, was in this show. And when I seen that, that really really got me going. I mean, that was just pure Kung Fu action. You know, so Bruce Lee would be one of the people that definitely inspired me. All right. So after seeing Bruce Lee agreed Hornet with progressed into um, from from judo, it got into what martial art after that, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, what happened was I started with like learning like, how to throw that was what was around because what first came into the West was the Japanese arts. And then later, and after 1954, then the Korean arts started to come. So we started to learn how to kick. So I was around, but I wasn't around too much Taekwondo at all. What it was is that I was um, doing some body type things 1966 i didn't get to chinese martial arts until 1974. i mean like real chinese martial arts under a real tutelage of a teacher so um, it was a bit of a progression to even chinese martial arts. and the martial art that i found in 74 was tai chi Okay, and uh, you're originally from Jamaica, right, sir? All right, so um, if you don't mind me asking, it was the, the judo that you found, was it in Jamaica that you started that? No, I got that in the USA. I okay. started um, the judo, the real judo. Not some, when I first learned when I was a youth man, some local flips and thing like that. So later on, we come to US, that's where the judo, because I did have a judo thing. I think, as I said, it wasn't until later that I started messing with those things there. When I learned, I never really, when it came to judo, I never was like a, like a real, real teacher in, in judo with some basics that we did mess around with and things like that. But I didn't go to a real study until 74 to enter into a real school. And that was definitely USA. Okay, okay. And then, and then Chinese martial arts came a little bit after or much later? Chinese martial arts. I started Chinese martial arts in 74. That was the first thing I did. And when we got to the real thing 
in 74, that's when we start to really learn about Chinese martial arts because it was a youth, I think uh, Nixon had went to China and he brought over a team. And when I, you know, that's what I think a lot of people seen it when he started to make relationships with mainland China. And that's what I believe that's what happened. That when I seen the real, you know, we only have movies and magazines and, you know, in the neighborhoods, it was no no teachers and no Asian people teaching and things. So some of the stuff we it, it made up, some guy had a black belt or learned from somebody who knew something. It was all diluted, diluted martial arts. It wasn't real. So it wasn't until I was like an officially in an actual tutelage under a real teacher. I have to say, even though I did what I would call BS from 1960, you know, little kids, you know, we, you know what I mean? You're moving around, you're flipping, you're stretching, you're doing splits. But the real training, I don't think my real training wasn't until 1974 under an actual real, in a school with a teacher, everything else up until that time was neighborhood, just fighting. So that's what we did more time was fight each other. Okay, and you said that was Tai Chi. Yes. Okay, who, who was your teacher? My teacher? Yes. Michael McKinley. He was a, my his name was Michael McKinley. Michael McKinley was a youth that was from a society called the Black Dragon Society. All right, Sammy Davis Jr., different people like that was a part of that society. And it was an underground school that I was went and got involved in. It wasn't a school, it's like my school where I have today. You can't join my school. You have to go through some practice and you have to come and go through some weeks of us getting around each other. So I knew this guy did martial arts and me and a friend named Alfred Johnson, we used to work outside his window. We knew this guy did Kung Fu. It was like, we, oh, look, when I grew up, we watched a lot of Kung Fu movies. So you, you, you know somebody, you know this teacher lives in this place. So we trained outside his house until one day he invited my friend to his class and his friend said, hey, can I bring my friend with me? And he said, well, yeah, you can bring him. So he had two students he's going to get. My friend lasted for one day. Done. You know, he did it. We went for the one day. My, my friend never came back. And I stayed with that teacher and learned from him. I'm still with, involved with him today. He's still, I'm still involved with him at this time of my life. And only had one teacher. Some people have a whole heap of teachers. I have one teacher. <laughs> That's awesome. And you're still, you're still with him to this day. That is absolutely incredible. Now I'm talking about I'm still affiliated. I don't, he's not, he's retired. He's retired, but uh, listen, that's who, when you learn from a person, no matter how good you get or how far you go, he is the seed. He planted this, this seed. I did a lot of things that he probably would never do. He didn't do world championships. He didn't do national championships. He didn't make kung fu movies. You know, but he created me wow that's 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 true he create he created a champion right so no matter what i did what i was in him with all the traveling i did now told you i lived in singapore uh, malaysia uh you know in japan korea all these different places he didn't he wasn't there but he put the seed and i never accepted another teacher ever because I didn't ha have to have another teacher. What he taught me was about, he helped me find myself. So that's what I found through him. And that's why I'm still connected with him because he gave me the greatest thing. He gave me me. 
is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That's great. That is true. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. So Thank let's go ahead and move on to this next question. What is, in your honest opinion, because I do feel you are very, very qualified to answer this question, your honest opinion, what is Tai Chi Chun? I want to say with Tai Chi, they have a thing called the state of nothingness. The state of nothingness, they have a word, it's a Chinese word, and I don't like to use Chinese words, but we'll use it for the sake of for, for expressing this. There's a state of absolutely nothing. And then the nothing turns to something. I already you already started yin and yang. Wu Chi Chi, Yin Yong. It, it now it, it it went from nothing to something. So now it was a balance of those two things. So now this Chi thing is split into a left, a right, over there, over there. So man, woman, left, right, up, down, in, out. It split apart and it couldn't really understand itself by itself. It was like it didn't yin didn't understand yin. Young didn't understand young until it seen the yin. And the yin seen the yin. Oh, then I could identify. Then they realized, oh my God, I, I, now I knew who I am. And it, that's when it comes together to become Tai Chi. That this other side, it needs this side to know. For me to be a good man, I have to somehow have tasted bad man. I must to understand what is good. So we go from the state of nothingness, Wu Chi, to the state of something, Chi. It divides into two entities, yin and yang. Can't work without it. They come back together to create Tai Chi, which is the balance and the harmony of the opposites. The balance of man and woman, the balance of this. You couldn't see the moon without the sun. Without no sun, you can't see the moon. You can't see anything. So the thing is, it's the absolute balance of in, in life, actually in life. Tai Chi. That is a, that is a great answer because that is spot on. Tai Chi as a philosophy. No. Tai Chi as, as we express it physically, the, the, the bo- suffix or the, yes. The boxing aspect of Tai Chi is so misunderstood that people don't understand how Tai Chi work. Tai Chi is something like Aikido. If you know anything about Aikido, it only works if you touch the person. If you don't touch them, there is no fight. If you touch them, there is no fight. <laughs> so, if, so uh, Aikido only works. Tai Chi comes. Aikido comes from Tai Chi. Lots of things come from there. Tai Chi doesn't work unless you touch. Tai Chi has to be touched. The person has to physically touch you for Tai Chi to be in operation and for it to work. So it works off of the attack. It works off your aggression. So if you're attacking me, you are exhaling. Ah, exhale. I'm inhaling. I'm receiving. I inhale. That makes me heavy. You become light because you're exhaling. You're blowing out like a balloon. You're letting the air out. I'm receiving the air. I'm becoming more heavy. So when you go out, I go in and then give it back to you. So it really is very effective, but you have to trust it. It's a matter of trust with Tai Chi. Most people, they they go against what it represents. It's the representation. Okay, make it simple. If a matador stood in front of the bull, the bull would trample over it. Over the matador would be dead. It'd be just dead matadors. The matador steps out of the way. 
because the force is too strong. That's one of the best examples of Tai Chi is to step out of the way. All right. All right. That's a very thorough answer right there, Master Clark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, let's move into uh, uh, another part of the second question, okay? Seeing as how um, we just highlighted the, the boxing aspect of Tai Chi, is it a practical method of fighting? Absolutely. That's what I was explaining. If a person touch a Tai Chi, a real Tai Chi player, a person that understands Tai Chi Chuan Ho to use, a snake has no arms. So a Tai Chi is mostly body movement. All right. The flow comes from the animal of the crane. So it's a, like a, uh, it's like a, a when you get a, a snake and you get a crane and you combine a snake and a crane together, you know what you get? You get a dragon. A dragon is one of the most mystical. It, it, it goes, it, it, it changes direction. It goes up, it goes down, over and under. So Tai Chi is crane, snake, dragon. And it takes on that essence. And that's how it really works. So as a boxing art, the way it would work is to allow the person, okay, it's like this. This will really be clear for anyone listening. This is Tai Chi. When people come in your house, if you have a really big house, a nice house, what you want to do? Oh, would you like to tour? Would you like to see my place? People always want to show you around the house. They take you to this room. This is the den. This is the playroom. This is the different room. You show people around your house because you know your house. Tai Chi is like that. Tai Chi doesn't close the doors. Tai Chi allow the doors to be open because if the doors are closed, a person is going to find a way to knock, you know, break the door down. So you might as well let them come in. Why, why destroy your door? Let them come in because why? I know where all the booby traps are at. Come on in. It's like the, the song, Hotel California. You're going to check in, my friend, but you're not leaving. That's Tai Chi. That's very good. That's a very good answer. So when it comes to Tai Chi, we need to help people, because it's a misunderstood art. You're talking about one of the most misunderstood arts on, on the planet. People see the outward of it and say they practice it moving so how's that a martial arts? We're perfecting the move to do it extremely fast. That's why we're practicing it slow to understand the body mechanics, where the energy is coming from, where's the force coming from. Something goes up, then you got to take it back down. Like a snake, it snaps out, then it coils again. Snaps out, then it coils again. So we have to understand where is the power coming from, the secret behind speed is slow. To move the speed, that's the secret behind speed is slow. The secret behind slow is speed. So Tai Chi is yin and yang. Yes, it's practice slow, but then you do that slow fast. That's great. That's great. Masterful. Masterful. So, Master Clark, I do have a question that stems from that, right? What is the Clark method? The Clark method. Thank you for asking. A lot of people, Clark method, you have the nerve. That, I'm like, no, I don't have the nerve. I'm going to tell you why it's called the Clark method, because a lot of what I know is what I learned from doing it. From doing it, I discovered things. Let me explain why it's, uh, it's okay for me to do that. It's because if we never went from bicycles to cars, to planes, to jets, to spaceships, there's a progression with everything. I am part 
of the growth of an art. How can I just do something that was done a hundred years ago? It's a hundred years later. I can't keep doing that. That was a hundred years ago. That was called bicycle Tai Chi. And then you have to move. It has to progress. We are part of this time. People talk about like in religion, they always talk about the prophet Isaiah and all these different old guys, you know, Abraham and everything. What about today's prophets? You don't think we have prophets today? You don't think we have those things happening today? Or was the Bible only at that era and we have nothing happen at this time? No, we have things happen at this time. It's called progression. We have progressed what we're doing. The Clark method is to take the method to improve it for today's society. Today's society needs to understand martial arts. We are not living in the future days of China and the future where we walking around with swords and spears and things. How does martial art work in today's time? The MMA, the UFC, that's called sport. People are eating hamburgers and hot dogs and drinking beer. Wow, great, you know, and they have somebody in the ring that's called a referee. This is a show. This is not real martial arts. It is a entertainment. Real fighting does not have audiences of thousands of people watching the fight, eating hot dogs and eating hamburgers. So real martial arts is only seen between the people that are doing it with each other. So sport is not the same as traditional, all right? Sport is sport. It has the rules. It has the company. That's what destroyed Kung Fu and martial, Chinese martial arts. Getting involved with sport. It's not a sport. It's an art that is for the actual protection of your human life. The sport has a referee when you're getting beat up pretty bad. They break it up. In the real fight, there is no one to save you. It's true. It's true. It's funny enough, um, Chinese martial arts is very true. Um, by getting involved with, uh, like you said earlier, when we were speaking karate, right? Like that was one of the downfalls of, 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 of traditional traditional Chinese martial arts, and I do agree with you. I do agree with you. But what's funny enough, um, the same thing happened to karate, <laughs> right? Karate is a traditional Okinawan art, right? When they, when, they, when they decided to turn it into a sport, it started to we have go down, no? To, to the watchers, they have to understand which side of the track are you on. If you're in the sport arena, that's still respectful. Hey, sport, there's nothing wrong with that. I watch football. We watch soccer. We watch taekwondo. You, I mean, it's a sport. We, it's a sport. Martial arts is not seen. That's not something. Martial arts is a reality. All martial arts. Oh, I would ask people, what, uh, let me mess with you. I want to mess with you. What's better, kung fu or karate? Which one is better? Really, neither. <laughs> it's right. a practitioner, right? We can say that. But back in the day, Kung Fu versus Karate. I'm like, we're the idiots. How you're an idiot? You don't know what the word them mean. Karate means, okay, what does Mike Tyson do? That's karate. Mike Tyson is a karate fighter. Why do I say that? We don't do no karate. Mike Tyson is one was one of the best karate fighters in the world. Another great karate guy, Muhammad Ali. He, he, they didn't do karate, he did boxing. Hold on, you don't know what karate means. Karate means there's nothing in my hand. That's what karate means. See, people don't know the words. They don't understand what they're saying. Karate means there's nothing in my hand. When I'm doing Tai Chi or any form of 
kung fu that you want to say, and I'm doing it in Japan, they're going to be like, wow, what kind of karate is that? If I don't have a weapon in my hand, it's karate. That's what karate means. Now, if I do that karate really well, then it becomes kung fu. Kung fu is to do something extreme. If you ever see my handwriting, I have everybody when they see my handwriting, oh my God, you, your handwriting is beautiful. The kung fu in your handwriting is amazing. My food, I can cook. All right, I'm going to tell you. We had a man the other day ask me about jerk chicken. I eat a lot of people jerk chicken. I don't like it. I think my jerk chicken is a freaking amazing. I'm not joking. I mean, not because I'm not, I'm, no, no, I'm sitting, hold on. Come on. I'm going to go to yard last year. I'm talking about me and I, yeah, let me taste some jerk chicken. I'm like, this is pure nothingness. Nothingness. My jerk chicken is good. You understand? So the thing is the, the passion that a person puts into their cooking is the same passion you put into your gung fu. When you put that passion in there, it becomes good. And the word kung fu means to persevere. When you persevere in anything, you get better. When you keep, you get better. That's what happens. You get better. That's the only thing that happens. You get better. So the thing is, kung fu means to do something extremely well. And that's, so karate and kung fu, I would love my karate to be kung fu, to be good. So my empty hand, tai chi, I want it to be kung fu. I want it to be superb. And the only way you can get there is through perseverance and hard work. To persevere is hard. That's why they say kung fu means hard work or, or to don't give up or to keep going. You know, it, that's what it means to do something to a point of perfection. So there's no such thing as karate better than kung fu. No, we need them. They, they are together. And it's Japanese word versus a Chinese word. So people need to understand that the martial arts, there is no separation. We are one family. I have kids. And now I have grandchildren. I'm the tree. My kids are the branch. My grandchildren are the leaves. Martial arts is one family. There's no separation. And my style is better. Karate is better. No, we are one family like the military we have the air force they fly in the air we have the army they're on the ground we have the navy they on the ground i mean i mean the navy is in the ocean we have the marines water and land then we have the coast guard that protects the borders so martial arts has those same things judo then you have the kicking styles, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, or whatever. Taekwondo is a flying art. Why did they fly? Because people were on horses. They had to learn to jump to kick the people off the horse. That's what it, you know, jump to kick them off. You know, so the, every system, every style has merit, and only the foolish is who separates the tree. The tree is one; it has branches and leaves. And why? How are you going to separate? It's all from the seed. So why people want to keep do that? They do that with also with humanity. Want to separate everything? All right. Want to be this man from there? This man from here? We are human beings. There's no bl black race, the white race, the Chinese. It, it's a human race. So martial arts. Is martial arts means war art that was used in war. I don't understand why people don't educate themselves to understand the essence and the details and the the real root of how things really work. And that's the education that I would like to help share is to bring in where there's unity, there's strength. And that's what we have. 
And this is all and, and this is all the education that's brought in through the Clark method. Through the Clark method is to help people say to insist freedom in your thinking. I know some people that do the young style 108 movement form. And they've been doing that form. Some of them, people might hear me. Some of you that are out there have been doing that form 40 years, 20 years, 30 years. What you've been doing is reciting the alphabet. You're sitting there, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That's all you're doing is reciting the alphabet. When you're going to write something? When you're going to write a paragraph, write a word, write a paragraph, write a chapter. When you're going to write a book, roses are red, violets are blue. If you love me, I love you too. Roses are red, violets are blue. You mess with me, I'll mess with you. I can change the, the lyrics, but it's the same English. Why do people just do the same old moves over and over? That's the alphabet. When are you going to write your own poetry? from the alphabet they only do the same old thing over every day I'm just, it, it's boring and they wonder why they don't grow because you don't learn to write you're just saying abc's i hope that made sense to you i hope yeah. that really because that's what people are doing they, they, those movements are for you to take the essence of and put that into different choreographies but the same thing the same alphabet we don't use no matter what book you read in english they use the same alphabet for every book if it's i don't care if it's history if it's porno whatever it's the same english so i don't understand why people are stuck in a little the form thing and they just do that same reciting the alphabet and never writing poetry. That's how we have to move it forward. We can't just keep it what it was 100 years ago. We will still be riding bikes. So somebody has to say, what about this? So I'm sorry that might have been a long winded, but that is the essence of the Clark method, is to open your mind and think about what's going to be 100 years from now. Oh, we're going to, like I said, still ride bikes, man. I'm living in my house. It's cold outside. I'm in Colorado. I have something called temperature control because somebody figured out how to give heat in the coldest places in the world because of progress and people developing things. So we can't leave it right there. So we have to move it forward. Hmm. Understandable. Understandable. And also about bringing, uh, but of course, bringing truth to form in the martial arts. Because I remember you had a, you, you had a little bit of a of a program like that called Truth to Form, correct? You know, one in Texas is for you to fight with your system. People are doing Tai Chi. They don't have any clue on what they're doing. They don't use it in their push hands. They're shoving each other. They're not showing the, the, the traditional movements, fair lady, roll back. Snake creeps down, part wild horses man. All those movements work in the push hands, but that's not what they're learning. They're learning how to shove each other, and again, say A B C D E E. They're not learning how to write. They're not learning. It's A E I O U, and sometimes Y I I B. I mean, um, I before E, except after C. There's grammar that people have to learn if martial arts. Once you learn the grammar and know the alphabet, then you can go write things. But if you're standing there the whole time, just A, B, C, that's what people, I'm telling you, is boring. It's really boring because we have to take it from the car to the jet. And people hearing me talk about this, I hope that they're saying, wow, I didn't think about that because we didn't. Nobody told you you were allowed to be an artist. An artist means you are free. Artistic expression. I don't need to do what you're doing is recite what you do. I can recite something differently. I can do something different. You know, but most people, what they do, they just follow the other person. 
They have. So I want people to learn the Clark Memphis that says, get into your independence. Get into what you believe. What, what's your opinion? That's why we have different things in this world because there were different opinions of people that said, no, no, no. I think like this. I can I can make something that go underwater. They said, but we got boats. The guy, no, I know I can make a vessel that can go under the water and stay under the water. They made a submarine because somebody believed that. Believe and achieve. Anything you believe, you can achieve it. But you have to believe. So martial arts, Tai Chi, I believe. It's real. That's why it's still here today. All of it's real. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving the Clark Method. It's it's realism through progression. All right. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Through life, because you I like you you said to me, Master Clark. And part of the Clark method is for me to master Clark. Master Clark, I am not over nobody. I'm over me. When you tell me, Master Clark, you reminded me, you said it nicely, hey, Master Clark, you reminded me to check out my ego, check out my conceit, check out my arrogance, deal with your fears, Master Clark. Master yourself, my brother. Master myself, you, you. Master yourself. I am mastering me. All right, when I kick my bum, that's when the real war happen martial arts is the war with me not with some outside person some woman or some man some child some animal the war is with my problems with myself that's what martial arts is doing for me martial arts is putting me in check martial arts is straightening me out martial arts is dealing with the wars and the shadows i have i can sit up in front of you be all intelligent and be all, oh, yeah, life full. Oh, yeah, thank you. Good day, brother, Mr. Abe. I thank you, Mark. All right. Then when you close off the thing, go snort my cocaine. Go shoot up my heroin. Go do my drink up some liquor. Who are you? Who are you? Marshall Washington is teaching and showing me to be my authentic self, to be strong enough to be me, to be me, a person, to be something with nothing. Is what martial arts has done for me. Am I somebody naked? Yes, I am. Some people only something when they have their car, their house, their bank account. Martial arts has taught me and showed me that you are something in yourself if you look in yourself. So martial arts has made me look to find me. And that's what I am mastering. That's awesome. That is awesome. Master Clark, can I tell you something? With what you had just said, right, you have answered three questions that I didn't even ask you yet. That's absolutely awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Let me tell you how. Right? First, when I had asked you, um, when, when I asked you about if it's uh, the Clark method, and then when you had spoken about um, what karate means, and then what kung fu means, Right. My next question after that would have been, right, what is the hardest part of developing one's Kung Fu? But you answered that. And I tell you how. You had said perseverance. Am I correct? It, man. Perseverance. If you believe, you will achieve. That's all you have to do is believe. And you will achieve. But you have all to right. just simply... It's so... Yin and Yang, achieve, believe. I mean, it's just right there. And this is what martial arts is doing for me. Martial arts, if I may say to myself, I can't wait for you to tell me this. I'm incredible. That's not ego. I have to look at myself and say, I love myself. I can't wait for you to love me. I can't even love you until I love myself. So, Martial arts Tai Chi has got me to understand Master Clark, master your emotions, master your behavior, master your thinking, how to direct your energy, 
how to inspire other people. Okay? So martial arts is way beyond just what most people are dealing with it on a self-defense. Why are you a victim? You're always thinking about self-defense or somebody coming after you or something. You are worried about yourself, and that's what the true martial arts is about. It's facing yourself, taking a mirror, look in the mirror and be like, oh, my God. Face yourself. That's what it does, man. This is real thing we're dealing with. What we're doing is real. This is real thing. This study is real. To fight yourself with why I never most people never thought of it like that. They think of kicking somebody, but at the same time, all the work they need to do on their self. And that's what I've learned from martial arts. It's making me work. They have people say, put the work in. I'm putting that work in with martial arts to master Clark because he's out of control and I need to master that youth. I need to master Clark every day. <laughs> hey, man, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Master Clark, look at this. How has martial arts or martial training helped in your professional career? What it helped me with my with the career, what has helped me with my career is that I'm finding life and this expression that helping other people and to be able to have a job that helps other people like link with their self with other people to hook in with their self I don't know what to say other than man I've found a great vessel to share with other people I use the word share because at one time, I have to tell you, I was a teacher. I was a teacher when I was pompous. I come up to you, Ma, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. After a while, you'd be like, who are you to teach me? But when I come up to you and say, I have some information that I would like to share with you that may help you in some way. Oh, here's some information you want to share. Your hands open up, sharing your hand open. I want to teach you something. Your hand closed up. You're like, hey, man. Close up your ears. So we have to learn. Like I said about the master thing, master yourself. Stop teaching people. Share information. Stop being this pompous person. This, uh, I'm, you're everything. I told people, yes, I won a championship. I was one, you know, because the person that could have totally what my bum didn't show up that day. I was the best that day because I was there. The guy that would have made me look like nothing, he wasn't there. And bless his heart that he wasn't there. Thank God. I'm glad he didn't show up. I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that position. You understand? So we have to keep it realistic to say, hey, in the sport arena, that was a sport thing. Now, my real fights, I don't have no video of that. I don't have no, no audience that can tell you about that. But I did win some audience uh, championships where people were watching, even fighting. That doesn't mean I'm a badass. I'm this bully, this dude that can kick people. Yeah, I won a championship in a sport arena. All right? The stuff I did on the street was way more credible, but I didn't get any rank, no television interviews, no magazine coverage because that's where it was at street. Wow. I'm telling you, I would, I would, I, I'm sure you have a plethora of those kind of stories and I'd love to hear just a few of them, Master Clark. All right. Great. So I have to ask you another question now. If you could teach the new generation of martial artists only one thing, whether it be technique or philosophy or it could be both what would it be the one thing i would share with anyone and like you said i've been hitting a lot of things is to understand that martial arts is with the war with their self that anybody to go in and make them learn how to see their self and, and understand what dreams are like when you have dreams like People have dreams, and a lot of my martial arts I achieved through dreaming. I got to do splits. I'm very flexible because I went and dreamed 
and I could do it in my dream. And then that me seeing myself do it made it happen in reality because I seen myself do it in a dream. So some things I wanted to accomplish, martial arts, doing this feat of jumping high or doing this movement or whatever, it gave me inspiration to apply to everything else in my life to make my whole life just as incredible, understanding that the word Kung Fu, work hard to apply yourself to everything you do. As a father, I'm doing my best to be a better father, being a good grandfather. I mean, there's so much improvement that we can do, and that's what martial arts has taught me how to do, is to buff and polish. Buff and polish. Clean and cure. So that's what I've been doing, is using the martial arts in that way to share with people that say, let's buff and clean ourselves. Let's deal with our demons and let's be better human beings and to help our families and friends and the neighbors around us in our country and to help the world. That's what martial arts is for and how we can serve. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great, that's a great lesson to pass on. That's a, that definitely is. Um, if more people were to receive that message, we'd, we'd definitely be in a better society, in a better state at that too. Well, yeah, that's why the promotion of martial arts on, it, on the reality of what it is can be very positive. But a lot of people are, are influenced by the money and they're not going into the actual education that martial arts could bring to people's lives. It's true, true. That is so true. Well, Master Clark, we've got one more question for you, sir. I thank you very much for your time, for being with us. Um, but how can you be contacted? The way I could be contacted, I mean, I, I tell people, if they really want to talk about martial arts, want to get involved with it or want I do a lot of workshops everywhere in the world all over the place I have people directly contact me you can reach me email master clark tai chi at gmail.com that's how it goes I, I don't I get my phone number is my business number Write this down, people, if you want to chat or want to study or be involved or whatever you might want to do. You can reach me direct, 720-244-3927. 720-244-3927. Call me. Love the chat <laughs> about martial arts and move it forward. But I want to say to you, thank you for the... Um, privilege, I'm going to call it a privilege, to be on your show, and um, it was fun, I mean, to be on your show and to talk to you, even hear some of your reactions to some of what I call BS, all right, everything I said to you is total BS, let me tell you why, it's BS unless it works for you, if it works for you, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that maybe has some merit. So I have to just don't think, again, humble myself and don't think like I'm doing anything because the one thing I can tell you that I do know is that I don't know. And the one thing that I can tell you that I understand or overstand for sure is that I don't understand and I don't overstand. So I don't know and I don't overstand. So I am a youth that's seeking so I don't know these people, so I want to make people understand. I said about the master thing. A circle has no beginning and no end. So how's, how you how you a master? Oh, you at the end. Oh, you a master. No, man. That's a beginning. So I want to help. I hope with this interview that we will help people to get some things focused properly for them to understand themselves and what they're doing, what their mission is with martial arts, and to understand about the internal war. And somebody that might think that is crap, call me up and let's chat about that. Because when you have somebody that's the opposition of what you believe, it increases your ability to go forward with that information or to say, hey, that person is right. This is nonsense. This doesn't 
have any married, and you say, wow, you have somebody that challenged you. So I love the challenge because the challenge creates the bike, car, to the plane, to the jet. We have to challenge. Have to do it. All right, all right, all right. That's great. That's great. Everybody, information for Master Christoph Clark will be in the description down below. Also in the description down below will be a link for Feiyu Shoes. If you need Feiyu Shoes, get the best prices, get the best deals, all at Feiyu Shoes. <laughs> Master Clark, thank you very much, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much for all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of this for the short notice. And you have definitely given me great gems through this whole interview. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm.